Hey everybody, today we are playing with Vizzy. I never really care so much about Vizzy because uh, if you watch my videos, you know that I'm kind of a guy that likes to go uh, deep into stuff and do everything by myself. But actually, actually Vizzy is pretty cool. So first, what is Vizzy? Uh, Vizzy is this package inside Max. It's a built-in package like Beep. You can in fact find the icon for Vizzy even on the left of the patch with this V. It's a package to work with video and images in general. So if you go in the package manager and we look for Bitsy, we make a little search, Bitsy, and then we launch it, takes a while. Then we have this little patch opening, which basically is a little introduction to Bitsy. So we can go, for example, here, a guide to Bitsy modules, which uh, shows us all the different type of modules in Bitsy, highlighted by the different colors, so, for example, we got input modules uh, in red, generate modules in uh, brown, utility purple, and so on. So, this is the perfect place to start learning about Bitsy. Now, I, when I started to play around with the Bitsy package, I thought, actually, it doesn't really need a tutorial because it's so easy and intuitive that uh, it's really a tutorial on this is kind of redundant. It's so well done from Cycling74 that it's basically plug and play. You don't really need to, to study it. But maybe it can be still interesting to play a bit around with it and maybe you'd like to watch me play a bit around with it. So let's say we want to work with a video, right? We got our video, we want to make some uh, effects on this video, we want to trigger it according to some audio input, the usual stuff. So let's say we want to play a video and also get access to its audio. So we will use the audio video player module. We drag it and drop it. Now, this is a B patcher object, which means that inside there is the actual patch that contains the Bitsy module, since Bitsy modules are just the uh, max patches. So, if we go into Object, Open Original, uh, we can actually inspect the original patch. It's a bunch of utilities and so on, but the core of the patch is the JIT movie uh, with the tilde object, which basically allows us to play a movie and also to get the audio from this movie. Um, now, one important thing to mention is that we now have Bitsy version 2, which means that now, by default, Bitsy will work with textures. Before it was working with matrices, then it was working with textures and matrices. Now it only works with textures, basically. So everything that we will get out of a Bitsy object is a GGL texture. So by default, you can see that it is already playing something, it's a black texture and uh, it's already outputting it, so it's a texture. It always works with textures, which is very efficient when working with movies, much more efficient than working with matrices, so probably they thought, why not? Let's work simply with textures. So basically this JIT movie object inside uh, the module has the output texture set to one. So they all have always this output texture set to one, all the input modules, because they always want to output a texture. We could also do it ourselves, as we did it in a lot of other videos. We can create a JIT movie, say output texture, and we will have the same result. This is just a bit more practical and fast, because you don't have to write all the attributes yourself, you don't have to set all the messages and so on. It's just already here, ready to play. So if we want to visualize our video now, we have a nice uh, output module here, which is called Viewer, which is basically a JITP window, but with a twist. Because if we check the original patcher, it's a GTP window that uh, it's being rendered on by a GGL renderer. So it doesn't really refer to the same um, OpenGL context in which the movie is playing. It's actually at its own GL context, uh, uh, which is kind of... Um, one could think that this is not so performative as to have just a single GL context that plays uh, everything, but probably doesn't matter so much. I mean, the, the performance drawback is not so big. Uh, one interesting thing to check is that inside the VZGL context object, there is a JavaScript uh, script that basically takes care of always setting the right context and so on. And it works the same for all the objects. So they all sh kind of share the same context, but some objects still have their own context, like for example, uh, the JIT viewer here. I'm still not super sure how all the thing is handled, but I can tell you that there are multiple GL contexts that kind of communicate to each other. And that's basically how it works, which could be a bit less efficient than having just one GL context on which every object renders, but uh, it's probably the drawback is not so much. Now, uh, if we drop a movie there, as it says, uh, we can even have uh, like the proportions correct. 
and we can also even choose our proportions. This is pretty cool, I have to say. This is something that is actually pretty nice to have. So, uh, what I really like about these modules is that you don't have to use like only PZ module uh, completely. You can also mix it with your own patches and style of programming, and it's still going to be super useful. Now, uh, you can see that the busy object has a lot of inputs. The nice thing is that when you over with your mouse on the inputs, you will see what they do. So they're basically setting the um, parameters for these objects here in the patch. So you can either set them manually or you can set them um, using some inputs. So for example, if we can check here the loop and we can, for example, set it with a floating number and then for sure we can set the loop start. We could, of course, like animate these inputs using some uh, oscillator, which are actually also provided by Bitsy, some stuff like that. And out of here, we get our audio signals. Uh, this video has no audio, so let's actually check a video with audio. Let's create an easy duck object, and it should actually... Yeah, so this sends out the audio output of the video, and we can also work with it and do some stuff with this audio output. Now, let's check some more modules. Um, okay, for example, there is a generator thing. There are, for example, oscillators, which is pretty cool. For example, what is that? Uh, it seems to be like uh, an oscillator with a bunch of stuff. Set the master oscillator frequency. Okay, let's check what's coming out of these oscillator modules. So let's make the frequency a bit higher. Great. Let's check this with like a multi-slider. We can say slider style, point scroll, something like that. Great, we can check our oscillator, what it's doing. Let's make the frequency a bit lower. So great, I suppose these are the four outputs from these oscillators. We can actually set, uh, check uh, with the mouse, exactly. So this seems to be the outputs from the oscillator. Cool, so basically they go from zero to one. It seems to be scaled between zero and one, so great. Uh, we could use these oscillators to do something. Uh, with our video, for example, and then we can choose also which function we want to use. For example, we could use a sine function, which makes a nice sine curve. Let's check this out exactly. And then we could have ramp, which I believe is probably just a linear ramp. Yeah, something like that. Ramp minus goes other way around. And then we have triangle, which is basically just a triangle, as the name says. Square, looks like a square probably. So great. Uh, let's maybe do something now with these oscillators and modify our video to have some nice effect. So let's go here. Let's go into transform. This is pretty cool. Um, we can check, for example, the twirl effect. Uh, if we go on the help file of this thing, it will show us how the twirl works, uh, which is great. So we can put this in between these two objects, I believe. Yeah, right. And now our video is being twirled, which basically the coordinates are being uh, uh, kind of twisted in order to have this um, twirl effect. Great. And now we can, uh, for example, animate the twirl maybe with uh, with this oscillator. So let's set this to sign. Let's make the master frequency higher. And let's check which input is responsible for, for the twirl effect. Set, amount, set the amount. So it should be that. Great. Uh, let's make the fade, the master frequency a bit lower. So by default, the the BZ module is going to remap every input between zero and one into the range necessary to cover the parameter. So we can change that by using the exact message. This is a new feature of BZ BZ point. 2.0 I believe so exactly in this case we are setting exactly the amount that we want so in this case it's just going to be between 0 and 1 so if we multiply this by something like uh, 3 oh uh, it's not really multiplying the output but the input to our function so it's just making the we are kind of zooming out from our function so actually we need to multiply this manually so let's multiply for example by 10 so it's going to go between 0 and 10 now, or just make me use a scale object. 0 to 1, let's rescale it between minus 10 and 10, something like that. Great. So now we have exactly the values going between minus 10 and 10. So that's pretty cool. We can change also the phase. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much. We can change the origin, the vertical origin, or the horizontal origin. So a bunch of effects we can choose. And uh, now we can change, for example, SAC. So this is sample and old, which I believe is similar to the result to some kind of random walk, some random numbers. So you go between zero and one. I mean, there's a bunch of effects. It's actually a bit redundant for me, I think, to go over all the effects. I believe I'm going to use them um, 
a bit more in my videos from now on since I kind of just discovered them. But if something more comes up to my mind or if you have some requests about tutorials about Vixi in particular or how we can mix Vixi into our OpenGL patches, then uh, let me know. So yes, let's keep this uh, short. Thank you very much for following the video. If you want to get access to a bunch of uh, awesome patches and to get in contact with me, I encourage you to check my Patreon, link in the description, and uh, see you soon in the next video. Ciao!